The planet that we live on is named wrong. It shouldn't be called Earth, it should be called ocean. It's 71% ocean. And it's literally the one thing on this planet that connects every single human together. One of the biggest impacts from climate change is heat waves. But what most people don't realize is that those same heat waves end up in the ocean as well, creating marine heat waves. There's no way to solve climate change without having healthy oceans. Most people sort of take the ocean for granted, and it is literally the life force on this particular planet. I get to wake up every day and say, this is the most amazing place ever. What can I do to inspire you to help all of us come together and collectively protect and restore these ecosystems? Insane. I'm Michael Stewart. I'm the co-founder of an environmental nonprofit based right here in California called Sustainable Surf. We've been around for about a decade and the thing that we've been doing is we've been trying to push everyone on the planet towards more sustainable lifestyle choices through the lens of surf culture. Sea trees makes my heart feel uplifted to think about we could help change this. We've been launching programs and creating initiatives and the latest and probably greatest one is actually called Sea Trees. And the mission of the Sea Trees program is really simple. It's to regenerate and restore, protect blue carbon coastal ecosystems all around the world. Like mangrove forest, kelp forest, seagrass, coral reefs, and entire coastal watersheds. These types of places are on the front lines of solving climate change. For instance, mangrove forests are actually about five times more effective at storing carbon dioxide than a tropical rainforest of the same size. The marine heat waves are actually what's responsible for killing off half of the Great Barrier Reef. The water gets too warm, the little coral animals can't survive, and so they die. Here in California, a similar thing has actually been happening. The predators for the purple sea urchins basically disappeared, and the purple spiny sea urchins exploded in population, and within about a year or two, they had eaten the kelp forest down to almost nothing. 95% of the habitat in Northern California has been wiped off the map. That's actually one of the key things that we focus on with our sea trees program is that kelp forest ecosystem. So today we're gonna to be going to the project that we support at Tankers Reef in partnership with Reef Check California and Keith Rootstert of Giant Giant Kelp Restoration. And we've also invited our big wave ambassador from Santa Cruz, Tyler Fox. Welcome, welcome Thank to you. the site. Yeah, we're gonna go out here to the site that we worked on and we're gonna check out the urchin barrens okay. and what we've been working on and learn how to call urchins. The ocean needs our help, unfortunately. More marine heat more often and we have to go and sustain the kelp. So for the kelp forest, how do we repair it back healthy again and thrive it? Once the urchins are actually taken care of and they're culled back to the correct population size, then the kelp can actually start to regrow and it can come back. In the Sea Trees California Kelp Forest Program, we're using volunteer citizen science divers to actually go underwater and do the work of culling the purple sea urchins back to their correct population size. Big urchins, you just use the chisel, okay. right? And you just break them up with this. And it's basically like, I can break in eggs. They're very soft. They're out of balance, overpopulated. <clears throat> They're eating everything. See ya. See ya. The kelp forests along the entire west coast, they actually take, you know, this like rocky, broken, wave beaten reef and they turn it into an underwater forest. It's, you know, kind of the super plant of the ocean. Kelp sequesters carbon. You know, it sequesters six times more carbon than a tree. But this fire is, is a forest fire that's going from, like, from Baja to Alaska, and, and no one's putting it out. On the land, there's National Forestry Service, so they'll go put the fires out, right? Here, no one even knows it's burning. So that's how you get these 70-year-old urchin barrens out there that are just a new stable state, and we're trying to take that stable state and push it the other way back to a kelp forest. 
and it, it needs our help to do that. Right. Whatever little bit of nutrient that might be in these urchins, which are essentially like empty eggshells, the fish are there and they eat it up. And all of that carbon and the nutrients actually stays within the ocean system and it provides that first meal for things to actually come back from. And we'll monitor the long-term progress of this reef over time and see what, what actually happened in this. How will that kelp forest reform? These, these are its teeth underneath here, huh? Yeah, so they're so damn powerful that they can literally yeah. gnaw and chew off rock. It's kind of like if you have a garden and you get this invasion of aphids and they basically come and they suck all the juice out of your tomatoes and the things you're growing and whatever else. And they basically just wipe out the entire garden. The crazy thing about kelp is that it can actually grow up to 12 to 14 inches every single day a kelp forest that's barren, full of urchins, remove the urchins, and you can literally grow a healthy kelp forest back within about three to six months. There's no other type of conservation work that we can do that's actually faster than that. When you protect and you preserve these ecosystems, it's not just carbon that they sequester, they do everything else. So they enhance biodiversity, they clean the water, they make for great fisheries, they're economic engines. So one of the things that makes the Sea Trees program uh, different than most other you know, environmental conservation programs out there, we've essentially built Sea Trees as like an online retail platform. People can come and plant 10 mangroves and restore 10 square feet of kelp forest and things like that. It allows us to actually work with cool artists to produce t-shirts and hats and pins that have this environmental give back that's super direct being able to at least plant a sea tree for every board that's made. Encouraging people to do more. We know what the solution is, and step one is actually getting you involved. We're talking about millions of people taking billions of actions and how they live their lives, get their energy, get their food. That really is the change that this planet needs.